Uh, back, not oh behind God. me, please. So when you are doing this, uh, just make sure that you know exactly where uh, the other people are and that they're not in a possible line of... Uh, so even where you are, I might be a little nervous because what happens, and you should be perhaps more nervous, you can zoom in if you find you need to. Uh, what you, I usually hide behind a tree when someone else does it. Wise move there. Okay. The, the, here, here is um, uh, lovely because what with this I would actually try and find somewhere open or even if you've got a tarp you can take it with you. If it's all grassy the rope can get caught in that. So this isn't very challenging so if I fail it will be really bad. Uh, but I'm, I'm you hold on, putting <laughs> this down so that it will travel freely. That's the main thing. And and the pipeline comes out of the building. And missed. Well, effectively missed. I got something, but not enough. And that's the most common thing that you'll you'll go over a branch, but if you haven't secured it. Oh no. Now, I'm not sure I want to take this hole down, but um, having, having got over that, um, ah, well, it's still not going to work. Watch out for me, right? Ah! Can Yay! <laughs> Over nicely, but it's not, it's not coming. So you get the idea. I'll do one more go, and if it doesn't, thin or if you use the fishing line, there's not, nothing stopping you pulling over a thicker rope. Um, and I like to try and twist this around so there's less chance of the branch will pull over. And at this point I don't actually need, if I'm with someone as I should be in the field, they can cut off bits of this. I'm not going to ask you to do that because there's no need here. But you can see that either would snap or you collect. Okay, and I can even grab it. Okay. I'll let someone else uh, wind this up please while I grab this other rope. Uh, we're being dangerous. <laughs> and just to make sure. On. I suspect uh, spraying the rope with silicon might, might help. So again, 
I can grab that down. So a rope like this will be, a, a rope like this will, I reckon will work to about 10 to 15 meters. One like that will work maybe, uh, the, maybe or 10 to 12. That will work probably 10 to 15 meters. Uh, the, uh, the slingshot, if you're in Queensland, will, uh, will work to 30, 30, 35, 40 meters. And that's why the people that collect in rainforests will often love it, because they can go straight up. Whereas something like this, you actually need to be standing back and get some good line of trajectory. Okay, so while someone is gathering that, I will uh, just uh, grab the secateurs of whomever. Thank you. And uh, go for the easy option here. <laughs> And if you gather around, I want to contrast the Angophora where there was uh, sepals and petals and the ridged fruits, the persistent sepals, the opposite to cusset leaves and the contorted branches. And that can be the, tr that's true even if it's a, 30 meet, uh, a 25 meter tall tree in Angophora, or a large 10, 15 meter tree spreading to 15 meters wide. If you start to look as you drive around Armadale, um, there's a species of Angophora, one in particular that's quite common. It's common in patches, that you tend to get patches of it. Look for that contorted branching. But here, here we don't have that. We've got, we've got, okay, even though some of the branches are horizontal and maybe a bit curvy, it doesn't have that same look. Uh, the leaves generally are this um, disjunct. Uh, we generally call them alternate and spiraled. Of course, some eucalypts, eucalyptus, uh, as this is a eucalyptus, uh, some retain the juvenile state of opposite and decusset uh, foliage into adulthood, into having flowers and fruits. And one of the silver-leafed uh, eucalypts that is not native to around Armadale, but planted outside the hospital on Butler Street, if you want to have a look at it, is a nice example of neoteny, where it's the retention of the juvenile feature. So not everything I say has, not everything I say, but in terms of this, that feature of alternate uh, foliage has exceptions in eucalyptus. Uh, so we see the, that we see that most of the uh, we see that the inflorescences are auxiliary. So we've got an auxiliary uh, cluster here, one here, one here, one there, and so on. They're not forming terminal inflorescences. Terminal inflorescences in eucalyptus are very uncommon. What we have here that's very unusual, which makes this particular species easy to identify, but you'll do it in a prep coming up, so I won't spoil that for you, is that there's more than one umbilaster there. You see there's a cluster here, one there and one there. So there are three umbilasters, but they're still forming auxiliary inflorescences. Okay, and you see that the buds don't have sepals and petals as such. They have those modified into a cap. So when you have a cap or a calyptra or an operculum over the bud, not the fruit, over the bud, then you know you can't have Angophora and you might have eucalyptus or corymbia. But um, I'll show you features that will separate out eucalyptus and corymbia in just a moment. Okay, so if you'd like to, we'll 